Hey, there we go. Serverside development and rock and roll. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Morning, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. My turn to talk now. Okay. Time for software. Can you hear me? I'm going to start. Okay. Hello, everyone. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Maurice Sasson, I'm the Chief Data Scientist at Outbrain, and I'm going to take you a bit of a pause on self-size development, and I'm going to talk a bit about data science. So this is actually something that uh, is uh, relevant to all of you, I think. Would you raise your hand if you're reading articles online, like on Ynet, CNN, Fox News, ESPN? Would you raise your hand if you have a Facebook account? Okay, so it seems like it's relevant to most of you. With D. D is a front end team lead at Albrecht. And we have the ability, based on these visits to pages all around the web, to understand what kind of content he likes to consume. So, for example, you can see that he likes to read content about mobile and basketball and celebrities and investing and television. And basically, we can see the distribution of categories of articles that he's reading. Do you think that the profile that we outbrain has on the user, based on the articles that he visits, is similar to the profile that Facebook will have based on what he is sharing? So I don't have the profile that Facebook has, but I can go to this uh, cubic and ask him to look at his profile. So I've looked at his newsfeed. This is by by the order of what he shared recently. So. He recently won a basketball tournament, the synagogue basketball tournament, so he likes basketball. And he's really looking forward to the new season of Game of Thrones, so we have television. And he's really looking forward to a new action movie from Marvel, so we have movies. And he works at Albrecht, so he's really proud that we recently acquired Revy, a new company that is going to help us uh, improve our services to publishers. So he likes investments and he likes tech. And once again, this is a video from basketball. And he likes reading about things that you need to stop saying because you should, you sound like a corporate robot. Okay, so he's reading about careers. And he recently <coughs> shared something about an application that he has deployed to the Android uh, as an Android app which recently received almost 10,000 downloads. So he likes to read about, to share about mobile. If you would go back to his reading profile based on the content that he actually reads. So you see that more or less many of the categories that we see on the visits profile are similar to shares. With one distinction, at least here. So there is one category which receives, it's ranked number three, but it's very similar to, it's among the top three uh, categories that he likes reading, but he didn't, it doesn't share anything about celebrities. Why is that? So, yeah, he's mid by age, right? <laughs> okay, so this is relevant to the study that I'm going to talk about today and how you can actually infer something from looking at visits and what you can infer from, share, infer from shares and how that differs. And this is very important. You don't share everything that you read, right? And the reason you don't share everything you read is because when you share something, you're indicating to your thousand closest friends that I'm reading this. So it's very likely that you would share only things that appeal to your social persona. Can shares indicate engagement? That's basically where the, the motivation of this, of this study I'm, I'm, I'm presenting here. Because there are many companies and publishers and marketers who use shares as an indication for engagement. Because either they lack some sort of engagement metric like pay views or CTR or time spent and so on. But they try to infer whether one content item or a different content piece is better than another based on shares. 
And I'm, all, I'm going to show you that basically every kind of metric that you can use, that, you, that people try to use in order to infer engagement, suffers from, from some bias. And any model that tries to make a good recommendation system has to incorporate several uh, of these engagement metrics or rank those metrics which suffered from the least of the bias. Let's observe the content again. What's your name? But no. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So the reason we came up with this is because we basically observe the whole, the entire content engagement funnel. What do I mean by that? When you think about online content, there is first the selection of what content to create. Just based on that, you already have a bias because there are some content items that publishers and marketers choose to talk about, to, to, to create content about. Usually they do that based on past performance, which is also biased, based on shares and engagement and other metrics. And then there is also what is being presented on the homepage. So if you consider what, when you enter Ynet or the market or whatever publisher you like, you are already experiencing the bias of what the editor chose to present to you. And after that, there is the user choice. The user choice, the user chooses only to read something that he, he can only choose something that is being presented to, but there are other biases as well. You have all those clickbait, right? How you, the title that you choose for the content will also affect whether people will click on it or not. And only then, users encounter engagement, only based on those articles that they choose to enter. And shares enters the final funnel. So you cannot share something if you haven't entered it. So you have a bias here, you have a bias here, you have a, you have a bias here. You don't know whether to choose engagement as page views or CTR. Both of them suffer from biases. And finally, what we went out to examine was whether shares also suffer from the bias, which intuitively things make sense that to you guys as well that it does. So measurement of user engagement must consider both where the engagement metrics falls under the, the engagement funnel. And if you don't do that, you will give wrong recommendations and you will select, if you will give recommendations to publishers or, or editors, what content they should be writing about based on these biased engagement metrics, then you're actually causing them damage. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the data that we have and for that I need to explain what Outbrain is in case you're not familiar with us. So you know those recommendations that appear at the bottom of article pages, like this article on CNN? This is what we do in Outbrain. It's called Content Discovery. And today these recommendations appear not only at the bottom of articles, they appear on the sidebars, at the home pages, in many, many places. And there are two kinds of recommendations that you will see. These are personalized recommendations to either the take you internally inside CNN. This is called Engage. This is content recommendation system that we give freely to publishers and marketers. They can install it very quickly on their website. And then our system gives the user content recommendations based on their history. For example, the profile that I showed you earlier of these and there's another kind of recommendations that we give is, it's called promoted stories or promoted discovery. These are recommendations that take the user externally to CNN or the host publisher. I'm going to focus actually on the internal recommendations here as a signal. So while recommendations appear on many, many publishers, about 10,000 publishers, some of them are the most familiar ones in the world. Why not? It's not the most familiar in the world, but one of them is in, in, in Israel at least. You have CNN, you have ESPN, Fox News, about 10,000 publishers. And it gives us a reach of over 560 million monthly unique visitors that we can observe their behavior and generate a profile for. This is based on visits. So because our widget is installed on every page on the host publisher site, then we know what is the content that the user is reading. Regardless of whether the user has actually clicked on the content recommendations at the bottom of the article. So we know what people are reading at every point in time. But we also serve recommendations, about 200 billion every month. So based on what people click on and they don't click and what they engage with or not, so we can also realize what people really 
engage, engage with once this bias of the editor picks is eliminated. And this uh, resource that I'm going to show you here is based on 1.8 billion content uh, data points. Sorry. And it's made of one week of data, twice. We took it during early 2015 and at the end of 2015, which is basically shows that every insight that I'm going to show you here is very consistent over time. It's, cons it's generated based on 200 of the largest publishers there are in the world today. We looked overall on 49,000 articles, which we generated almost 900 million pages and 47 million shares. Okay, that's times two because we looked at two weeks. So these are the single signals that we've observed. We looked at page views. Page views is direct entries to an article right from the homepage. And we looked at shares. We can log into the Facebook API and for each URL we can actually see how many shares that article has. So even though it's not outgoing data, we can log into the Facebook API and, and download it. And based on that we can actually calculate the share rate. And share rate is very important to observe because remember what I showed you with the funnel. Shares is going to be very correlated as itself, it's going to be very correlated with pages because if a user doesn't enter a page, she cannot share. Okay, so the really interesting metric is not shares rather, but, but rather share rate, because that captures the specific information, the unique information that shares can encapsulates. And we also have Facebook referrals. Facebook referrals is basically how many entries this article has from Facebook. So it's the action down the funnel. A user has shared it. They, you see it on the newsfeed, and their closest friends observe it on his newsfeed, and they click on it. So it measures both the shareability and the clickability from Facebook. And we have also referral rate, which is once again normalized by uh, the number of uh, views that the user had. And we also have clicks and CTR. CTR is also normalized by the number of times that we presented this to the user. And what you see here, the interesting figure here, which is uh, is this. There's no correlation, even slightly negative correlation between sharing and page use. So popularity and shareability doesn't go, don't go hand in hand necessarily. And this is something which we, when we seen it in the for, for the first time actually quite astonished us because there are many publishers that use share it as an indication of what they should be writing about. This basically means it's wrong. You shouldn't do that. So that's one thing. The other thing is what is correlated between shares and referrals. So shares and referrals are highly correlated. That's a good thing because it means that if you cannot log into the Facebook API to download a lot of data all of, for all the articles that you have in your inventory, you can actually use Facebook referrals. And if you're on the website, you can actually have that private information so it's not a problem for you. What else? The, the other interesting thing is that CCR, although it's also not perfectly correlated with page views, it's substantially more correlated with share rates. So it's a better indication of what the crowd likes. So that brings us to the difference between shares and CTR. So we define something which is referred to as the private social dissonance. Someone told me, Umid Bayesh, right? To show to, to share something. So this is exactly what the private social dissonance defines. It defines the relationship, the, the ratio between how much a content item is being clicked when it's being served by the outgoing network versus how many shares or the share rate of this article. And this is what we see. So we've defined that. And first I'm going to show it to the human eye, without machine learning and without anything, to the human eye the dissonance, how it looks like. So we took 200 publishers and almost 100,000 articles and we've crunched that data into this plot. And we've ranked all the categories based on this private social dissonance. And what you see is this. On the left, you see what those, which, uh, those categories with high social, uh, private social dissonance. They have 
relatively high CTR. So in the privacy of your own home, when you're being presented with these recommendations, you click on them, but you won't share them. And let's see what do we have here. So we have adult, hardware, sex, crime, celebrities, computers, fashion, and relationships. So these are the kind of content categories that people like to read. They like to read them, but they don't share them. And if you would have looked only on the profile, the, page, the Facebook profile of these users, you might consider not showing or not writing about celebrities. But people like reading about them. That's, that's the dissonance. On the right, you have the thing that people like to share. They like to present it to their friends, but they don't read it a lot. So we have here music and wine and books and all those things that why, why are you smiling? You're smiling because it makes sense to you, right? This is like, to the human eye, it makes sense what I'm showing you. So this is the private social dissonance. Next. So this is basically the picture that you see in the beginning. So there is the persona of what you like to read in the privacy of your own home. And there is the persona that you like to present externally. And they don't necessarily match. So any recommendation system that wants to do a good job any recommendation system that wants to give editors right, the right recommendations of what content they should be writing about, they mu it must overcome those biases that I've shown you. So we've assessed it, we've defined the dissonance, I've shown you to the human eye that it makes sense, and now I'm going to assess it by serving. I'm going to see which one of these signals that I showed you earlier has the best capability to predict user engagement externally to the host publisher site. So we've trained a model that basically tries to predict whether a user would click, and it's a function of x, a vector of a lot of engagement metrics, CTR, share rate, and uh, page views. And you also have the personalization score, which means how much the user likes, what is the affinity of the user to that given category, and the interaction between them. And what we found was this was a model that was trained for serving and it was uh, deployed for a full scale production system. And what we see is that the CTR, the CTR has, actually has the best uh, prediction capability, the most importance in predicting external to the host publisher whether a user would engage with the content or not. After that, Facebook referrals also has a significant capability to predict it, given. The, the score that, that engaged CTR has, but it's less, probably about 25% less. And only at the end comes page, page views. So page views actually as a metric is a very poor metric in order to understand what users beside, beyond that bias that editors pick in order to present on the homepage, uh, what, 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 is the best, uh, method, what is the best metric to apply in production. So, I think you will see the irony in this uh, recent share that I did. Basically, you will only share, you will most likely to share things that you would find engaging, uh, that, the user, that the, your friends would find engaging, but with that small comma that says, okay, I, I want to make sure that my social persona is not being jeopardized by that. Thank you.